We've always had room in our hearts for film and TV and Not just on Netflix, but tape and disc and theaters Also, oh, God forbid that they take it all away And leave us nothing to broadcast to loyal listeners We'll binge watch every single movie So you don't have to, what else are we here for? Coming to you every week, listen to us while you're busy Luckily, we forgot to grow up. Hey, everybody, it's Craig. Hey, it's Scott. Hey, it's Andrew. Welcome to episode number 73 of the Forgot to Grow Up podcast. On this week's episode, we're going to talk about a little thing that happened last week. Um, not an NFL game. Uh, it was the Oscars. It was the Oscars. Not even one. Not if even, you heard of them. Not even, Yeah, it's a, it's a little thing. I don't know. Fans of this the pod- Academy Awards as well. F- <laughs> fans of this podcast may not have may not have heard of it, but... Uh, but it is a thing, and some people care about it. Some people care about it enough to freaking watch it. Yeah, it's been three hours watching something that we're, we're just going to go over the next half hour, maybe. Hours. <laughs> I'll be shocked if we spend 20 minutes on it. We're going to spend yeah, longer on this intro stretch. than we will on the top six categories, five categories yeah. in the Oscars. That's fair. That's fair. And then we're going to talk what we watched this week. And boy, let me tell you. We might spend more time talking about one thing on that list than we do about the Oscars, but we'll see. We'll see. We'll get there. <laughs> so, how do we want to do this? We want to just kind of do. Well, well I, I figure we can do it the same way well, as I'd, our preview. You don't. You don't know the list. Anyway. I don't know. So. So, um, there's not a whole. Do you want me to take my headphones off? You guys talk about it, yeah, and then we'll I just, guess who it is. We'll just do the same. Uh, we'll just do the same ones that we did for. Um, for the predictions. Our, 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 our Oscars okay. preview slash prediction. Our challenge. legacy picks, gotcha. Yeah, and uh, so we'll do the same order. We'll do best picture, director, actor, actress, supporting actor, supporting actress. Okay, okay. Sound fair? I feel Sounds that. pretty fair. easy. So let's let's start right off the hop. Um, Andrew, do you know who won best picture? Nope. Okay, what's your guess for best picture? I don't have the list. Fuck, I'm, of, I, yeah, I'm trying to like, I gotta Google the list. <laughs> uh, but I don't want to Google the list and accidentally get them. I know that Green Book was one of them. I assume Bohemian Rhapsody was another one. Yep, those are both. For some reason, I want to see like was Roma on that it list? It was on yep. that list. And I can't remember the other two. Uh, Black so, Clansman. Black Pan was and Black Panther Clansman one? and Black and Black Panther. Clansman. And Vice. Okay, I don't well, know if you said Vice. Oh yeah. Okay, so for me, it would be between I have, Vice, I have the full Green list now, Book. If that helps. Black Panther, okay. Black Klansman, Bohemian Rhapsody, The Favorite, Green Book, Roma, A Star is Born, and Vice were the Best Picture nominees. Well, I'm going to say Green Book because that movie was fucking amazing. Are you sure you don't know already? Is that who won? Yeah, Green Book won. That is who won. Fuck yes. Well, I'm pretty sure that's who I picked. I believe so, too. I'm pretty sure I recall that because it was one of those ones that I was like, yep, didn't see that, but that's like this whole list. Yeah, that's Panther. that's one where I'm like, you know, what, I support it. There was a couple ones there where I'd say, you know what, I'll, you know, if they win, I won't be pissed. There's a couple that I saw there that I was like, yeah, if they win, I'm gonna be a little pissed. Yeah, Bohemian Rhapsody did I'm, not win. Thank, thank fucking balls. God. All right, so up next is lead actor. We had Christian Bale in Vice, Bradley Cooper in A Star is Born, Willem Dafoe in At Eternity's Gate, Rami Malek in Bohemian Rhapsody, and Viggo Mortensen in Green Book. Okay, well, I want to be Viggo, but there's no way that movie's going to win back-to-back on this list, so I'm going to take him out. Um, this was lead actor, right, we're doing? Lead actor, yeah. <sighs> Okay, it wasn't Willem Dafoe because I, I had never even heard of that movie before we did our, our pre thing. You say that like that means something when talking about the Oscars. That's true. That's true. Who? Uh, what else was there? Uh, Christian Rami Bale Malik? and Vice, Rami Malek and Bohemian Rhapsody, and Bradley Cooper with a deviated septum in A Star Is Born. Well, deviated septum can go fuck himself in that role, so I'm not going to give it to him, which leaves Rami Malek and uh, and Christian Bale. And I think that movie might have been a little bit too political to give it to him. So I'm going to go Remy. That's two for two, my friend. Two for two. <sighs> I'm convinced you already know the list. I told I told you the two I know. And that was the animated one. And the uh, was it edited score or whatever the fuck it's called. 
Well, this will be the true test then as we move on to lead okay. actress. Um, okay. I'm going to try my best at this. We'll see if I can mm-hmm. do it. Was this Glenn Close? No. Um, first up, Wait, we have we... Yelitsa Aparicio in Roma. Glenn Close, the wife. Olivia, Olivia Coleman in The Favorite. Lady Gaga in A Star is Born. And Melissa McCarthy in Can You Ever Forgive Me? Well, I. it's not Melissa McCarthy. It's, <laughs> it's never <laughs> Melissa McCarthy. It's not Melissa McCarthy. It's not the first one either because... It's not. It's uh, not. No. Yeah, they have a big um, thing against Netflix in this. Particular I'm gonna say aspect. it's between Glenn Close and uh, and what's her face, Lady Gaga. Oh, I'm gonna need. And I want to give I'm it to Lady. Need an answer. I don't want to give it to Lady Gaga. No one ever does. She looks like. Um... <laughs> well, I mean, someone probably <laughs> gives it to Lady Gaga. <laughs> she looks like. She looks like Chelsea Peretti. Are you saying that because of the nose? Nope. It's a, it's the whole face. <laughs> it's the whole face. I'm going to give it to Glenn Close. I'm going to give it to Patty Patty Hughes. Well, this is proof that you don't know the list because it went yes. to Olivia Coleman for her role in The Favorite, I believe. Yes, yes. it did. Okay. I'm making Google sure I'm this. reading <laughs> stuff right. She I've got played... the list as a backup. <laughs> okay, yeah, because I've got like Vice's uh, nominees list and it does not have any highlighting. Oh, it was the queen. Yeah, you know what? I didn't man. even consider her the lead in that movie. Well, that's Guess what? <laughs> I've Surprise. actually heard a lot about that because she doesn't even have tech. She barely has the most screen time I heard while it, like when I was watching a video about the Oscars. And yeah, it's because there's three female leads, I believe, in the favorite. And it's pretty much a lot of like equal time between. Well, them. Yeah, and it's, she won it's either it's either Emma Stone story. with her or it's Emma Stone with. Um, oh, fuck, what's her name? The mummy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, weren't you going off all about this? The mummy can do. Th- the mummy does things to me. <laughs> the mummy does. Did you guys hear me say the that time? <laughs> that time I did. I, did. I really did. <laughs> oh, fuck, this is gonna bug me now. It doesn't change the context though of that. I feel <laughs> that we no, hear no. it. was <laughs> so much funnier when you said mummy yeah. does things to me. <laughs> and it was Rachel Weiss. Yes, so it's it's go. Rachel Weiss, Emma Stone, and, and her. And I honestly would have thought Rachel Weiss was the like the number one because there's a few scenes of her just alone, like her with like that was male, the impression I had like got men. from when how much you were talking about her when we were doing our Oscar predictions. It, it, and it might take she was like, the lead. Yeah, she was the lead, but she wasn't even nominated. <laughs> well, she she was up for uh, supporting actress, wasn't she? I. Potentially, I believe so. Actually, I think both of the female uh, supports were for. Let me get to the list. Yeah, they Actresses both they both got nominated. They? Role, Emma Stone and, and Rachel Weisz both are on that list, which we might as well just roll ourselves. Into yeah, the I was next. just thinking that. Yeah, yeah. rather we'll, just, we'll we'll move around on this list. Uh, actresses. Okay, well, uh, go ahead. I was gonna say who else is on the list. Actresses though? in a role in a supporting role: Amy Adams in Vice. Uh, Marina de Tavira in Roma, Regina King in If Beale Street Could Talk, Emma Stone in The Favorite, and Rachel Weiss in The Favorite. What was the one other than Roma and If Beale Street Could Talk? Amy Adams in Vice. <sighs> I like that pick. It's safe. But is it too safe? But I think it's too safe. Well, you guys, I think between the two of you, you would have let it slip if it was the other two. Like if it was the the favorite, I've like been, I think I think it, it would have yeah. come out of one ear mouths. <laughs> I'm not saying good. it's Scott, but I think it would have been Scott. It would have been Scott because Scott almost let the other one go. <laughs> <laughs> I think it would have been Scott, so I don't think it's them. Which means it's between Eddie Adams. Was it Roma? Was that the other one? Uh, Maria yep. de Tavira and Roma. Yep. It's not Roma because it's not Roma. Which means it's between the other two. I want to say Amy Adams, but you guys are being mum on that shit. But I'm gonna go with Amy I'm Adams. I'm being mum on all of them. Uh, you, you're uh, you're batting 500 over here, my friend. Motherfucker! <laughs> Actress was in Regina? a supporting role was Regina King, and if Beale Street can I'm, talk, I'm, I'm okay surprised that, by how little I've looked at the other list. By the way, <laughs> I'm shocking myself with the amount of stuff that I know right now. <laughs> Important stuff. All off the top of my head over here. Uh, but that brings us to actor in a supporting role. It gives us two more categories. So you have two more chances to get it right. Okay. Um, so actors in a supporting role. I'm going to go with Mershala Ali as the way you pronounce Mahershala. his name. Mahershala. There you okay. go. There's a reason why Scott's on this podcast. Can't say <laughs> tidbit. 
but he's all over. All I've over heard his name said a billion times. <laughs> yeah, well, he was in Green Book. Adam Driver in Black Klansman, Sam Elliott in The Star is Born, Richard E. Grant in Can You Ever Forgive Me, and Sam Rockwell in Vice. Now, if that isn't a stupidly difficult list, then you find, you find me one that's more difficult, please. Okay. I remember okay. I was talking so, about this particular one for a good chunk, too. Yeah, this is a tough well, one. Well, I've got it in my mind, it's got to be Adam Driver or it's got to be Mahershala... Ali. Ali. Ali, okay. I was like, fuck, I, I focused so much on the first name, I can't remember the last one. It's really arguably the easiest part of the name, too. Well, because I focused so much on the first one. Okay. And see, I understand that probably a lot more than Craig could, because I'm like, yeah, that's exactly why I switch sentences up all the time. I'm too focused on the end of the sentence, and it ends up at the beginning of the I'm sentence. I'm sorry, I'm a consummate <laughs> professional. I cut hair, motherfuckers. Okay, so... Adam Driver is too ugly, oh. so I'm gonna go with the other guy. I really like him as an actor, but you are correct. You are, you are three for five. It was Mahershala Ali in Green Book, and he, he fucking he killed it there. That movie role. was amazing. Uh, that brings us to our final category. We'll go with director. I think that's what we talked about, right? Sounds about right. I think so, because this is the one I went with a legacy pick. Yep. So uh, we have Spike Lee with Black Klansman, Pavel okay. Pavlovsky with uh, Pavlikowski with Cold War, Yorgos Lanthimos with The Favorite, Alfonso Caron with Roma, and Adam McKay with Vice. Well, Adam McKay is still a white ass name. <laughs> yeah, but he did a bunch of really good stuff. But we haven't seen much in the way of white ass names winning so far. But I don't think he won. That movie was awesome, but I think it was a little bit too different for the Academy to give someone an award for it. Was Green Book up there? No. Black Klansman, Cold War, The Favorite, and Rome, <laughs> and Vice. Okay, so Favorite can go fuck itself. <laughs> Uh, we are. I'm, I've taken Vice out of the thing myself. Fair enough. Yep. How the fuck does Vice get up for that shit? Or not Vice? Uh, the favorite. Vice. Yes. The favorite. No. How does How does that get any recognition at all? Some Vice one for okay. So just, bla- just so, so we're just so we're all all on the same page here. Vice one for makeup and hairstyling. I'm okay with that. That's just you get for makeup though when your lead. You get it for makeup though when your lead actor just puts on a bunch of weight. Yep. Like, can you get really get it for that? <laughs> yeah, that's kind of like the, with the sound editing and the Queen in the Queen yeah, movie. Yeah, like it's bullshit. It's like, well, come on, they just they already <laughs> like, had the. You had to copy thing. and paste a YouTube video, <laughs> like. Okay, so. <laughs> I love the idea of just studio execs just just going to YouTube and copying yeah. the URL, going to one of those YouTube to MP3 sites. <laughs> And then submitting that to Cineplex. No, yeah. we don't. We don't have to buy it. We did it the same way everyone else and their grandmother gets their music. Okay, so for it's got to be between Roma. And it's got to be between the Black Klansman, and the Black Klansman is a sweet story. So I'm gonna give it to that one. I'm gonna give it to Spike Lee. You're going to because f- he's got a cool fucking name. You finish at 500. Uh, uh, Roma won that one. Fucking Roma. I know. It's- it's interesting though, because Spike Lee did win for uh, is it adapted screenplay for um, Black Klansman? Black Klansman yeah, won for best something. adapted screenplay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, out of curiosity, um, I assume the Star Is Born song yep. is what won that crappy song. Thing. Yeah, that That's bullshit stuck song. Stuck in my head. Who, el- who yeah, else? Who else was it? Who was it up against? It was like against for, another star, or all the stars from Black I assume Panther. the Black Panther song was on Original their list, right? Songs. Yeah. Um, hang on. I'll get there. I got documentary, short film, live action, film editing, sound editing, sound mixing, production design, music original score. Um, nope, that's not it. Music original song. All the stars on Black Panther. Um, the place where last things Something go. Something from Mary, Mary Poppins, Poppins, I imagine. Yeah, the place where yeah. last things go. When a cowboy trades his spurs for wings in the Ballad of Buster Scruggs, which is right at the beginning of the movie and arguably one of the weirder parts. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I'm just glad they, they got a nom just, just somewhere in there, even though I still haven't watched that movie. Yeah, it's... <laughs> God bless the Coen brothers. So, just before we move on to what we watch this week, unless you guys have other things to add... To, I just uh, want to say a 50 is a fucking pass, yep, so... 500 is... Batting 500 is pretty good. Yeah. Um, since I don't know if I would have been able to guess it if I didn't know the answers. Uh, but I just wanted to mention that... Uh, that the the Canadian short film one for animated short. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Which one was that? That was. Uh, oh, that's, that's the, the one about the dumpling. The dumpling. Yep. Dumpling. I think we all predicted that too, because I it's think the only we, we all knew. Yep. It's the yeah. The only animated yeah. short we know. God bless Toronto, kind of. <laughs> Sometimes. Don't go there, but. No. <laughs> this one time. Or do go there. I don't need John Tory finding me. That's true. Um. <laughs> You live there already. You're done. I did. I did my time. <laughs> Hard time. <sighs> yeah. Etobicoke South or North. I was in North, but the detention center is in South. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> so, shall we move on to what we watched this week, or do we have other things yes. to say? Let's let's yes. move yeah. on. To I'm what very we curious week. as to what you guys were talking about. Oh before no, we're that saving that to well, last. Scott, what did you watch this week, to buddy? Last. Scott, what did you watch <laughs> yep. this week? <laughs> All right. I guess I'll go. Um, so I didn't actually, it was funny, you guys were talking before trying to write down your list, and I had my list written, but that was because it was really easy. I did not watch a whole lot this week. No Andrew well, knows this. Was it, was it Stargate? It was Stargate. It's a whole lot of Stargate. I've been binge watching <laughs> it. I got all ten seasons from Amazon last week. I waited a couple days before I started it, but yeah, it's mainly been SG-1 for the last week since we've talked last, and... I don't regret that decision at all. I love that show so much. It's been like three years since I rewatched it last. And just sitting here, rewatching it, I just... It's probably the thing I get the one the most nostalgic for. I get the most nostalgic for. Because this is one of the first okay. shows I ever, like, really as a, discovered. Like, watch as, and, like, being able to comprehend, right? It, yeah, exactly. Watch and comprehend and, like, get into it because I wanted... I really wanted to, and I wanted to find out the story. Cause, you know, a lot of times as a kid, you get into it because your parents put it on or they decide, yeah. they let you watch it in a sense. But this was just at the beginning of high school. My brother had gotten the first four seasons for Christmas, and I was like, okay, I'll, I'll try it, right? And I started it back then, and I fell in love immediately. Twenty, There are 40-minute episodes. There's 20-plus episodes every season, and I binge-watched that thing at least 10 times during high school because I love it so much. It's just my favorite sci-fi and the elements of, like, humor the cast is great and just so many different awesome things i just love it so well much. and there's just enough going on too yes like they don't go absolutely nuts with like oh there's 17 different subplots going on this season and this chick's working against this guy but working together and oh, they no, don't want it like it's very it's not simple. it's not bullshit exactly it's and it's the first show i remember discovering that like realizing certain shows have overarching plots for seasons right like Inside. Which frustrates the shit out of me. Like, if you're going to give me 23 episodes, give it to me straight. Like, if I got to wait 23 weeks if I'm watching this on TV, yeah. usually it's closer to 46 with all the bullshit fucking interruptions. I'm looking at you, The Flash. Yeah. <laughs> like, straight I calling don't, out The Flash. <laughs> straight calling out The Flash. Like, I, like, I just want you to be you know, sweet, simple, straight to the point. Just be like, this is what's happening. This is what we have to do this episode in order to move on to the next obstacle. Yeah. I don't need like, oh, yeah, this this guy over here and, and this chick, they're doing it. But then she's in love with And get the fuck out of here. Yeah, and SG1, fuck you, Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> Jesus. And SG-1's, I think, great because it doesn't go that far with the overarching like season plot. The overarching season plot is the show's overarching plot, which is, hey, there's alien bad guys. We got to go yeah. find a way to defend ourselves against them. We Sweet go to a new and simple. Plane. Exactly. And that's what I love it's about a, it's it. It's a blanket statement. You get a new thing every episode. Some people don't like that very like form formulaic. Um, well, you know. To those people, I say, don't watch the show. Well, that, exactly. These shows aren't for people who don't like, you know, just the comfort of it. But the people who do like them, just that's how we can rewatch them. Because it's just, it's just, you put it on and you, you know what to expect, but you also get to like, revisit these worlds that you just really enjoy well at least that's why i love sg1 yeah. at least the, the people who don't like that are probably the same people who think that the favorite should win fucking oscars <laughs> but it did shut <laughs> your face <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so i've been binge watching stargate as much as i can but i did watch a few other things because i do i had to finish up a couple things so i finished watching happy first season because i thought the second season came out this week. It turns out I'm 
We all know I'm a little dyslexic. I wrote down March 27th. In my mind, I thought it was February 27th. But it's Man, written happy down birthday as... to me. That's going to be a sweet birthday present. <laughs> yeah. Crush that. Yeah, well, that's, I don't think it's Netflix. That's just when oh. the season premieres on sci-fi. Ah. Uh, yeah, sorry. Well, motherfucker. But I might get that on our YouTube anyway, so that's a whole different other thing. Um, but yeah, so I finished Happy Se- rewatching Happy Season 1 um, a month early. My plan was to finish watching it as the second season came out, and I did that a month early. Anyways, I finished also finished rewatching The Flash Season 4, because... I've been making my way through that for like four months now. Since the fifth season started, I've been rewatching the fourth season, and I finally refinished that. Uh, I'm keeping up with Star Trek Discovery and Black Lightning, and that's all I watched this week. That's it? Yeah, I told you guys, it's a lot of Stargate. It Man. was all Stargate. Mm-hmm. Well, I feel Saturday. like you spent way more Sunday. time watching stuff than I did, but our list is pretty much the same, Mike. <laughs> well, my list is extremely long, so Craig, do you want to take take the baton and then i will finish up on that thing we mentioned yeah i'm gonna skip that that thing that we mentioned <laughs> that thing that Jeez, i'm thing, curious if our audience thing. is as curious as i am about this or if they've all just the best part is they've never listened at all <laughs> we've given zero hints as to what it is either i know yeah, like, like even, even sam when I doesn't here, know right now none she may have read the name if she could read my handwriting that's well, it hopefully she can't no one can uh, so I'll start with one that I actually forgot to mention um, last week. Uh, watch this movie called The Impossible uh, with Ewan McGregor and other people oh. I don't recognize. Um, it's about uh, the uh, the tsunami that happened at Christmas a few years ago. Okay. Uh, it's about this family from they're from England, but they live in Japan and they're in uh, um, Sri Lanka for Christmas vacation. Okay. And then there are they're there, and then the tsunami. What a bizarre place to go for Christmas vacation. Yeah, but if you're from Japan, it's not that far. That's fair. and the That's resort fair. they were at seemed very nice, it just re- in the path of a tsunami. So, yeah, tsunami happens pretty early in the movie, earlier than I expected. And then the whole thing is like, you've got the there's so there's two kids and the parents, and uh, at the be at the start of the movie, it's it's the it's the mother and the one sun and it's like 10 minute sequence of the rushing water and they're trying to stay together and this kind of stuff as they're getting thrown around when the shock waves are coming in and then it's the whole thing where they find a hospital don't know if the rest of the family's still alive i feel like i'm not going to ruin this movie for you um no we will never watch no. yeah so they <laughs> they save this other kid um that they find um because uh, they could like hear him yelling. He was just a little little guy, absolutely adorable. Um, and they go to a hospital, and uh, and then like this entire you're like halfway through the movie, and you have no idea if anybody's still alive. And the implication's kind of like, yeah, everybody's dead. But then you're like, it's Ewan McGregor, so is it the case? He's not yeah. dead. He's not dead. <laughs> He's yeah, still alive. And then like the whole thing comes together to like. Uh, to um the the whole thing comes together to like this big suspense because they're at the same hospital at the same time but they don't know it and they're like crossing paths constantly and then they run into each other and everything's happy and then uh ewan mcgregor's company pays for them to take a private jet off the uh out of the country because they're super white and privileged and aren't we all and so that that is what that's how that happens such a good it was a good movie though yeah, no, I actually ha- did see this a couple of years ago because it has both Ian McGregor and Tom Holland. Yes, I forgot that very young my, Tom Holland. My mind was absolutely blown when Sam was like, "That's that's Tom Holland." That's I was like, "Oh, it is. <laughs> You're right." Go go, Spider Ranger. He's what made me discover that movie actually. So like when he was announced as Spidey, I went and looked up his filmography. And then I saw that he did a movie with Ian McGregor, and then I watched it. Yeah. But yeah, from I only remember what you told me, what you just said is like, yeah, yep, I remember those parts, and that's the rest the, is just drama. That's, that's the movie. <laughs> yeah, there's goddamn. It's a good movie. It, they they play the suspense really well, and then it just kind of falls apart at the end. Like it, it just seems like it gets up to this peak, and then they're like, hey, by the way, the whole family's reunited, and then like the mother's <laughs> like on her deathbed, but she's a doctor. 
and like I'm pretty sure she's gonna die, but she doesn't. And then like they just coast to the uh, to the end of the movie. That's that's a bit anticlimactic. Um, okay. So I watched that. Um, I also watched Bridesmaids for the first time. Uh, do I remember much of it? Not really. Was I in and out of sleep? Probably. <laughs> um, I remember it being funny. That's what I've heard about it. It yeah. just doesn't seem like my type of it's, movie. It's not a... See, it's not like a traditional kind of like girls movie funny, if that makes sense. I know what you mean. Do I you, more so mean I'm not a big comedy movie guy lately. Well, that uh, like, <laughs> that probably doesn't help. Um, well, you know what I mean. Like, yeah. like the last thing I can remember, like I don't watch like the Kevin Hart movies and stuff like that, or like Girls Trip, and I don't I watch. Kind of got an overload of comedy. But... Well, yeah, you know what I mean, though. Like, I just that's what that one fell into for me. It was just there was a point in like around when that one actually came out in theaters. I just pretty much stopped keeping up with comedies on my own. Like, I'll watch them if somebody else wants to watch them. But out of my own choice, I'm like, I find Marvel funnier, so I'm going to watch, you know, Avengers again for the That's 15th fair. time. That's fair. That's fair. Like, Thor's jokes to me are funnier in Thor Ragnarok than a lot of these ones I have seen. In their defense, I also haven't seen a lot of them, too. So, like, Bridesmaid, I don't know if it's funnier than Thor, but there are a lot I choose of not to find out. funny <laughs> bits in Bridesmaids. Which I think I've probably seen on the internet a lot, too. That's mm. another problem with a lot of these things, is they get ruined by the internet. It's like... They, people like share the best jokes from it on the internet a lot or it gets turned into a meme and then I could try to watch one of these movies and it's like oh wait no I, I know all the jokes I know all the punchlines but that's just me what did yeah, you yeah. think of Rise <laughs> there's uh well I like I Rose Byrne is the best part of that actually I take that back the Irish guy is the best part of that oh, the Irish well I like all the actresses the, in it too like when isn't they're he a cop? other things <laughs> I I honestly can't remember. Isn't he the cop that busts uh, What's-Her-Face, or am I thinking of a different movie? I Isn't it like something Craig McDonough? Craig was just full-on asleep. I <laughs> really yeah. I paid so much attention to this movie. Um, I'm going to get in trouble for saying that, too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you I, are. Actually, I don't even want, I don't even want to imply that's going to happen. I, I'm, not, I'm not implying that's going to happen. Hey, Let me Craig, take do you need a place to move? Someone's getting punched, <laughs> Craig. We talked about this earlier. You are... <laughs> You are on a one-way ticket. It's Chris O'Dowd is the Chris O'Dowd is, yes. For the go train later if you need, okay? If it comes to Ottawa or Montreal or anywhere, really. We can, it doesn't have to necessarily be anywhere in particular. <laughs> um, you always have a bed here, my brother. Chris, Chris O'Dowd is the, is the Irish guy. Irish policeman. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's funny. Like, there's a lot, like I said, there's a lot of funny bits, but there's... Uh, there's some interactions, and I can't remember. See, I'm terrible at this. Um, is it? Is it? Ro- yeah, Rose Byrne's the is the one that that Kristen Wiig is always that's, button heads with. Yeah, yeah. that's the well, their that's the maid of honor, isn't it? Yes, their interactions yeah. are so long. Yeah, that's that's the thing. I that's that's my. I'm gonna go. I, I'm gonna say it. That's my only critique of this movie. Like, I even liked Melissa McCarthy in this movie. See, honestly, Melissa McCarthy in this movie is kind of what formulated my opinion on her in general. Because I was like, she does nothing for this movie whatsoever, her, other than a couple of ridiculous fucking jokes here. Yeah, her there. character is way funnier in this than anything else she's in. Ugh, I just, I didn't even find it that funny. She just bugged me the whole time. I liked it. Um, I did not like the interactions Melissa McCarthy, between, that sounds fair. No, I didn't like the reactions between Kristen Wiig and Rose Byrne. Like they, they're funny at the beginning, but then they just kept going and 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 going. And it's just like I'm tired of this. You guys, I think that's called Kristen Wiig syndrome. Probably she wrote the movie so because her career just keeps going and 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 going. And then you're like, you were you were Magatu's main lady. How are you still doing this? What? Wait, you don't like Kristen Wiig? Oh, she yeah. bugs me, man. Oh, oh see, I like work. her. I like her oh, mostly. God, no. There are some of her roles that I'm like, her in Adventureland, not so much. Her in this, I imagine, oh. probably not as much. I didn't mind her in Ghostbusters, no, you'd though. you'd probably actually <laughs> like her in this compared to other stuff. She's I can probably she's, count on, like, one hand the amount of things that I like. I don't mind her in. She's pretty tolerable in uh, in this movie in comparison. Wet, hot American summer. 
I I can tolerate her in that. Well, it's because of the framework it's in. Zoolander two. Okay, because she doesn't really talk much. I like in when real she does English. those bit parts like that, like yep. like like in Zoolander. Those are my favorite ones of hers. Which is pretty. She was pretty good on Saturday Night Live too. Oh yeah, that the too. Fact like, that I, she's she's the, one of like the queens in my mind, like up there with Tina Fey and all those other yep. greats. How dare you put her in the same category as Tina Fey? I like foods how, like lobster how and Skittles. Dare you? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Tina Fey is. You know what? I'm. I'm not even gonna say she's the corner of the birthday cake. She's her own mini birthday cake, all icing. Christian Wig is the centerpiece of the giant fucking rectangular birthday cake that the little kid had to have that no one fucking really wanted. I'm not talking about the kid. I'm talking about the cake. It's shit. <laughs> it's cheap. I think you were talking about the kid. I think you were talking about the kid. So it sounds like maybe my the kid. You know what? I'm even gonna rescind that. Okay. She's the smash cake that the kid gets on his first birthday. That's what Chris <laughs> one, Wig is. No How dare eat. you put her in the same tier as Tina Fey? How dare you? This is not the direction I thought this was going to go. Yeah. Tina, Tina Fey is, is better than Jesus. Tina Fey is great. That's what I was saying, too. I'm saying they're both the, amongst the female dare alum you. of the SNL. This bitch <laughs> wow. left Matt Damon. Dude, she's going to okay? be part of the DCU. <laughs> I don't like that either. It's going to be the next Wonder Woman. <laughs> yeah. Bitch is going to die at the end. Well, that's, that's good. That's another She part. left. <laughs> she fucking left Matt Damon in downsizing, okay? She's the reason the movie was so long and nothing really happened. <laughs> oh, man. I forgot about how much I didn't like that movie. I, I told you I could count on yet. one hand the amount of <laughs> movies I can tolerate her in. Uh, so I I watched that. <laughs> we're gonna yeah. move. Uh, I didn't we're know we were move. gonna go so passionately into that. <laughs> we're gonna move right along to the next one. Um, Apparently that was my trigger. I watched. Yeah. I watched A Star Is Born. Oh, I... which one? Like the new one? Yeah. Just, just clarifying, because yeah, not the wait, wait the new one or the newer new one? Because <laughs> there's Cause five, there's like seventeen of them. <laughs> yeah, no, the the most the most recent one, the one yes. that got all the Oscar nominations and stuff. Yes. Like that. Um. Your so thoughts. that that movie starts off great, like I was absolutely addicted. That's what I've heard. First I forty-five was are great. Addicted to Bradley Cooper, just because like I, he that, like I, I can't even I can't even formulate words. Yeah, you he, sound like me. He, uh, <laughs> like it just everything about his character at the beginning of that movie, it, and really just throughout the entire thing, feels like he's just like they they had no script. They were like Bradley Cooper, just pretend to be a guy who can't freaking hear. And he was like, <laughs> you got it. Do you mind if I do a Sam Elliott impression? And they were like, no, but can you learn how to play the guitar first? And he was going on with that instead. That's what it felt like. It, it just felt so flippin' natural the entire time. Like, he's okay. talking. So, so like, he, the movie starts when he's on the stage. Well, kind of starts when he's on stage, right? And first of all, either he's very good at pretending to play the guitar or he played the guitar in this movie i would guess he knows how to play guitar yeah, he seems like one like, of those movie stars that he was, learned it to do that you it know was what I mean? it was it was great like Such, either either the acting was fantastic or he's a good guitar player like there's there's, okay, there's no so it was complicated enough that it's not something he could have just picked up the day of like uh, i can no. do like no Iron Man sometimes, you know. I dun, dun, dun. don't want to use. I don't want to use me as a, a benchmark because I'm not a good guitar player, but I can't play that. Well, that's, so it's not something me, that you could just throw more of a benchmark a, for me yet. So it's not something you just throw together as an actor. Okay. Um, yeah. And, so I'm and like, he's probably trained it's in it. accurate, like his finger positioning and everything like that. Like it all looked very accurate to me. So either, like I said, he's a very good actor who just learned how to play guitar. <laughs> Fake so guitar, that it looked yeah. like it, he was playing guitar, or he did it. Either way, um, do you so play like, guitar in the Wedding Singer? I don't remember. It's been <laughs> yeah, so long since I've seen that. I was that trying movie. to think of any of his other roles where he might have played guitar, but I can't think of any. And that was but, just the first one. I like, so that that's the beginning, and then he gets yeah. off stage and he's talking with his driver in the car, and like that feels like a pretty natural interaction. But then, like, there's there's a bunch of interactions where he's where he, like he's talking to Lady Gaga's character, and he's he's like he's like I can't hear you, but they're in like a bar and it's loud and stuff like that. 
it just seemed really really natural the way he played everything about it like it didn't see it didn't feel like bradley cooper was acting it felt like more that they put him in the middle of the movie and said well, well everybody You're else got, just everybody stuff. else has scripts uh you, you just need to here, here's your character's backstory make it happen well he did write and direct it i believe that makes sense to me um so the he first, directed it for sure. the first 45 is great it's the whole you, bradley so, cooper is a freaking is music he god he's a great singer okay i sometimes i think people are good and i'm like but i'm no. curious what somebody who knows what real music sounds like you know what i, I mean? like, <laughs> would listen to jackson main albums okay cool i liked that um so that that's the whole thing and and lady gaga's character is like getting all like into it and and that kind of thing pretty much the second she starts to get popular on her own the movie loses me yeah that's what i've heard at about an hour 15 hour and a half into the movie um i looked at sam and said does this movie feel long to you (laughs) because it was no (laughs) so then and have you guys both seen it I, yeah okay. i have not but i know okay. everything okay. that happens he kills himself. <laughs> yeah yeah so then and then well which they i do know up, that actually <laughs> it was unex it was unexpected until um uh, until it was getting it's, closer to happening i was like yeah he's gonna kill himself so that that was a little bit like that's where it got interesting again but then it stopped being interesting and that song is gonna be stuck in my head yeah i listened to that song today and <laughs> it's like it's it's a it's a decent song. I just don't like the chorus at all. I think they were really lazy. I, yeah, well, you mentioned it. That's a good way Sha- to put la, it. La 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 la. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it won us. It won. It won an Oscar. So what? The it hell won an wanna... Oscar. Yeah, that's <laughs> so true. <laughs> I'm clearly not the be all and end all of musical critiques here. So I'm not going to pretend to know what I'm talking about. Well, I still respect your opinion on music more than my own, so. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I I liked A Star is Born. I could have had it at, uh, it's two hours and ten minutes, and oh. I think that they could have, got, yeah, exactly. That it sounds is a like, long, like too it's long a for me to want to click movie. on it. Yeah, but, I wouldn't click on that because of that. <laughs> yeah, well, we watched it. It was great. Um, and I did not say that sarcastically. It was great. Do I sound like a battered individual? I'm not trying to. <laughs> Ken Craig, I'll send you schedules for the E-Train. <laughs> um, it's actually going to be gray out. <laughs> yeah, we watched it. It was good. It could. It would have been better at an hour and a half, I think. Yeah, that sounds like... Blink twice if she's making you say that. I could have done... Uh, I could have done better <laughs> with... Uh, with less of the Lady Gaga careers mediocre part, and I could have watched a Jackson and May more movie. Jackson. I, I could have watched a Jackson May movie. I thought Sam Elliott was Elliot was great in it. I well, it's because it's Sam fucking Elliot. Didn't remember that he was in the movie until he showed up and was like, "Oh yeah," and then immediately after <laughs> that's he, how long the tail end of that movie is. Yeah, Immedi- immediately after that. Uh, Immediately after he showed up, I was like, oh, yeah, Bradley Cooper's doing a Sam Elliott impression. That explains where he's getting the voice from. Yeah. yeah. Like, they just hung out. Yeah. It's like when you date somebody and they start using the same, like, terminology as All you do. All the freaking time I do. Yeah. So that's what it is. He's just like, fuck, I'm, a, I'm Sam Elliott now. God damn it. Just, I'm, I'm the first ghostwriter. Son of a bitch. For a guy who can't, <laughs> who can't hear anything either, he talks really quiet. <laughs> really quiet. That's why I can't hear anything. whole movie. And he can't hear anything because he's too friggin' stuck up for those in-ear monitors. Yeah. In-ear monitors are great. Have your hearing and play music. It's fine. <laughs> That's our PSA for the <laughs> for the Forgot to Grow Up podcast. See, Andrew, what you did know. you watch this week? Well, my list is long as all balls. All right, bring okay. it on, bud. My list is as long as Craig's big dick. So <laughs> buckle in. No comment. <laughs> Moving on. So... <laughs> <laughs> So I'll start off with the usual, like my rewatches. I re- I've been watching a little bit of Family Guy, just getting ready. I've been watching some Psych down at the shop. Um, I crushed Umbrella Academy, yes, which you I wasn't gonna tell Scott about because I was psyched to just bring it up on the on the podcast, but I couldn't hold back. 
I texted him about it on the weekend. I was obsessed with that show. It's so awesome. I'm so happy I it didn't was watch amazing. it in a single day. I almost slapped Aiden across the chin because he was like, no, the story's good, but everything else is stupid. None of it makes sense. And I was like, they lay everything out for they, you. They it could feed not it be, to you with a spoon at some it point. It could not be <laughs> more well-directed. Like, everything that happens, they fucking tell you about. They explain everything. Like, and he's like, well, I don't get that he's a teenager. Like, that doesn't make sense. And I was like, they fucking tell you he comes back and he got to the this calculations time, like, wrong. when he left. And he's like, it's no, time no, travel. that doesn't make sense. Like, he should have, if he came back in, like, his 20s, it would be better. And I was like, you know it's based off a fucking comic book, right? <laughs> like, like, it's based off of a line of comics where he's fucking 13. Yeah. That's they the... can't just make him 21. And you're like, no, no, it would, it would make more sense. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. It would make no sense, because then it would just be a dude. It'd be a 20-year-old t- dude. It wouldn't have no, like, uniqueness to it, which yeah. each of these there'd guys be, have. There'd be nothing different. Yeah. <laughs> Like, Kate I, Walsh was a pleasant surprise. Didn't see that coming. That's the uh, that's number five's boss. Right. Yes. Okay. With the with the agency. Yeah. Yeah. That was a nice. She one. was she was on. She plays. Um, fuck. What's her name? I on, don't. Uh, so bad with this. Right <laughs> on <now>. Grey's. <laughs> I want to see Adelaide, but that's not it. Uh, you're close. She's the one who got the spinoff. <laughs> yeah. Derek's was ex. it private practice or something like yeah, that? Yeah, it was private practice. Why can't How I do I know that? Why do I know that? <laughs> Fuck. Why do we know she was a grace? <laughs> yeah. Damn it. Oh, man. Addison. Addison, that's right. She plays Dr. Addison Montgomery. Yeah. No, I liked her um, coming in, too. Like, yeah, she was a pleasant surprise because she's just enough of a B-plus lister that I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. Um, The cold openers with the umbrellas are pretty in- like entertaining yep. for me too. Uh, like each comic. one just has like a random like Umbrella Academy logo. Just it happens. Yeah. And then it, it, like that whatever they were doing that that popped in had really nothing to nope. do to it wasn't better the to. story. Yep. <laughs> so I like that weird kind of half-ass cold open. Yeah, that's a nod um, straight from the comics. That's yeah. how each of the comics open. Okay. Yeah. That's pretty sweet. Um, I like that. There's like four different episodes that have a dance scene in it. I, yeah, that, it's awesome. That doesn't really better the story at all either, but I was so down. Like the, was it like nobody or some, I nobody's watching me or whatever it is. Where they're like, it's, I, I think, think that's what it was. Yeah. I've, yeah. I have not stopped they're, listening to that song doing, since yeah. that day because I just just have a little rewind thing going on in my yeah. head of that scene. Where they all do really awkward, it. intense dance moves. <laughs> Especially the guy with the urn. I just love that. He's my favorite. Yeah, <laughs> he's just yeah so Klaus. Oh, he's Klaus, hilarious. Yeah, I love his character. It's just so like... Well, there's some times where he feels like he's the main character too, which yeah. is pretty cool. It does seem like the... And he's Irish. So that's, a, that's a bonus. Yeah. And so I just he's like, an Irishman playing a German. <laughs> him dancing with, you know, the urn with his father's ashes in it just and he dumps it <laughs> which i saw coming because you don't give a drug addict yeah. a freaking no. urn to carry around that's no. just asking Al- for Allison the drug. was awesome and i yeah. kept i couldn't help thinking that if that actress played starfire in titans i would have been significantly more sold on the character of starfire like just something about her attitude kind of matched up I, I, I feel like she would have done a good job as Starfire. That's fair. I feel the, star, the Starfire we got, who I enjoyed as Starfire, just maybe yeah. a little bit sassier, maybe? Yeah. Just a little more, which I enjoy. I still love that Starfire. Yeah. I love that actress who played her. I forget her name now. But yeah. No, I know what you mean. I can see what you mean. She would but, fit uh, the original one a little bit more, like yeah. what we know from the cartoon. Yeah. But I really liked her and her and Luther's like little dance they do to Dancing in the Moonlight. Yeah. Fucking love that song. Love that dance. It was such an awkward dance to watch. Oh, that's like they just look like two people with no rhythm who are Which, trying to do a slow give dance. Together. A little credit and to I the guy who plays it. Luther, right? Because he's got this giant prosthetic. He's well, he wasn't around. wearing that though in the dance. Oh no! Right? Yes, right. I forgot. Yeah, he, he goes back to like his normal. Yeah, yeah, he's having like they're doing a little dream thing while it's going on. Right? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah oh right. yeah, he has no excuse for being a bad dancer. Both of them <laughs> in their prime. It's just he's just an awkward white guy. <laughs> yeah. Well. Not all of us got rhythm. I and then Mary guy. J. Blige playing Mary J. Blige was pretty sweet. <laughs> yeah, that, that one, I, just, I still don't like, know her character's name, but she's Mary J. Blige. <laughs> with the dude. There's, a, there's a scene where they're, like, destroying shit. I think it's like they're blowing up the diner. Oh, yeah, it's when she blows up the diner. That's yeah. what it is. In one of, the, like, the last episodes. They're playing her music in the background. Oh, I totally and I was missed like, that. <laughs> and I was like... 
<laughs> holy shit, this is this isn't even meta. This is like fourth wall and a fourth wall. Which, Fuck. I, I hate that I missed that because I was definitely listening out for My Chemical Romance songs to pop up. Yeah. Because, <laughs> which they did it. But a couple times I'm like, oh, this is very My Chemical Romance E. <laughs> like, you could tell that guy had the, the Gerard. What's it? I can't remember his name. The lead Something. singer of it who wrote was the co-writer of Umbrella Academy. He, yeah. I, f- I could see his like workings in with the music and stuff like that. Like I feel that definitely contributed to there being those dance sequences, his involvement with the show. Like the fact that it's his comic book and that he helped with developing the show. So yeah, but yeah I really enjoyed those scenes. I really, I definitely going to be rewatching it soon. Maybe once I finish the first season of Stargate, I might rewatch it before I start the second one, just because oh, it's so great. I love it. Well, I, I liked it because it was uh, it was really easy to to follow, and it was it was pretty pretty straightforward to guess what was going to happen. Oh, like yeah. you you could figure it out, but it didn't ruin it. Like there's some shows where you're like, yeah, okay, I know what, I know what's coming. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Vanya's the bad guy. Go fucking figure. <laughs> Like the whole mo- like the whole thing, like you know what's coming, and yet I'm sitting there like, fuck yeah, just. I want to see how it happens. Just I want to see how she snaps. I just want to see her put on a white suit and play a white violin. Yeah. Yes. My one. And she did. My one problem was her not realizing what a creep that guy was. That's my only thing. Yeah, he was creepy he, as all shit. He, like, like the second he walks into frame, he is a hundred percent. You're like, oh, he's but the, he's a creep. Like you, you I'm, never have I'm a not second gonna... where you're like, this guy isn't a creep. Like. Like, he doesn't come off as charming at first. He just, like, you know what I mean? If he was a little more charming, I could have believed it. Like, oh, okay. But yeah, he, but we know people who are... <laughs> we know people who are just so gullible that you could tell them things about, like, someone they know. And they're like, no, no, that's not true. Like, so people just see what they want to see, that's right? That's fair. Like, and her character is like, very and flawed how many How many creeps out there have significant others no, have you're... kids <laughs> so they boned at some point i would say that's like... my one small little thing was i was just like like even bef- like when i'm watching the first episode and he walks in like and she's like right away like well this is odd you know he's older than my normal you know student but like yeah. that part to me it's just like the way he's coming off as soon as he walks in i'm like this guy's this guy's got creep written all over him like the whole time yeah. that first scene he shows up i'm like he's gonna attack her that's what i thought the whole first scene oh, yeah. like, i'm like he's, he's got sure. like some kind of weird thing going on he's gonna do something like or try when allison attack shows up she, yeah yeah allison shows up at the apartment he's there and he's like oh yeah uh stumbles through his bullshit excuses and then she tells vanya and vanya's like okay like she doesn't even care that he was just randomly yeah, at his apartment like, wait what no okay no see for me that was a big another word like that's, right. that's those are the two couple decisions after that point i'm like i get it a little bit more once she gets a little like once her powers start to come out a little bit more and he's a little bit, but even then, it's like he's he's never got the charming side for me, at least. But I get how her character, no. who's like very a big loner and very isolated in this, in particular, in this show, right? And he then, he almost felt like um, like a Zemo character, where he's just like, I know what I have to do. Yeah, like almost, maybe something you know, something from a different dimension or something's like pulling the strings on him or or something like that. Like that's just how I felt. Yeah, no, because he was just a weird fucking character. It would have made a little sense too, like more sense too, but if it had a bigger plot in with his character too, like if someone else was pulling the strings. But yeah, I like how his end came. That I was very happy about. I was like, oh yeah, girl, yeah. get it, fucking kill him. Yeah, should have done it sooner. Literally, with like, everything. With yeah, everything, and it's just like how cool would it be in like season two if like Vanya is just destined to be evil always in every timeline. And it's like her from one timeline pulling the strings on him to create her. Oh, like that would that'd be, be really like, cool. That would be a sweet twist. That'd be some crazy. Like shit. at the end of season two, you find out that like no matter what, the end of the world is coming, and no matter what they do, yeah. they can't stop it. And Vanya so becomes like stuff. the destroyer. <laughs> yeah, like it's it's set in stone. Yeah, like that'd be fucking sweet. Oh yeah, I'm so excited for the second season. I'm very curious to see where they go with it. Yeah. Um, so uh, back to my list of things I yes. watched. <laughs> that was I watched a very long sidetrack. I stand by it. It wasn't really a sidetrack. We talked about the, the show. It was all. Um, yeah, it I was watched, very much all of just one show. Yeah, <laughs> it was a branch. I watched f- the Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones. Nice. Um, Star Wars. I've already talked about those. I'm not going to talk yeah. about those anymore. <laughs> other than go Star those. Wars. Um, I started watching Dirty John upon the recommendation. Of a certain somebody. Hey Sam, how's it going? 
That show is fucking weird. Like, talk about guys who just, you like, you're like, you should get a gut feeling. Like, no. Eric Bana's character is one of them. Oh, yeah? Okay. Like, he's, you, like, his whole character, you're like, no, nah, there's something off about this dude. Like, mm. even if you don't know that it's based on, like, a real-life story or anything, like, it's kind of like that uh, that guy from Abducted in Plain Sight that I talked about last week. Yeah. Where it's just like, you should just know. Yeah, it's like, You should look at him and be like, no, that guy diddles kids. Or, no, that guy, like, he's he's funky. There's something wrong with him. He's like, a guy you don't want to leave alone some, with yeah. your children. <laughs> there's there's something off about this Eric Bana character. Like, I'm pretty sure he's a murderer, but we haven't quite got that far yet. But I'm pretty sure that some bitch is going to kill some people. <laughs> He, it's it's a show that I'll probably finish. I think it's a short series. I'll probably finish it just to say I did, but Fair. I am not thoroughly enjoying it, which is a shame because I like the the lead actress in it. But yeah, you can't love just, everything. It's a weird fucking show. So speaking of weird shows, oh, is this segueing uh, out of that? Are we finally get to what I've been waiting all episode for? No, 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 no. no I got no, like five, still no. got stuff to Come do, on, man. Son. Come on, son. I watched Studio 54. It's a documentary on Netflix. It's an hour and a half. Yeah. And let me save you an hour and a half. Okay, I just go wrote it on down, Google. So probably don't. Okay. <laughs> uh, Google Studio 54 history. Click on the Wikipedia page that comes up and read it. Nice. <laughs> I do that actually because so often for movies I don't want to see. That documentary is boring as shit. It looks boring, and I'm just looking at the Wikipedia page. <laughs> It's so boring. They start from like how the, you know this guy, these two guys just get together and they're like, okay, let's open a club. So they go and they tour New York City and they check out all the clubs, check out the gay clubs, the black clubs, all the places that like, you know like people are trying to go to get in to have a good time. And they decide let's make this the, like this great club. So they do, and then they get sloppy about everything they're doing. One of the owners is like, you know, I'm I'm super into everybody being high and having a good time. Here's some Quaaludes. Here's some Coke. Here's some Coke and Quaaludes. Anything you want, come to us. We sell it out the back. We're good. Wait, we don't have a liquor license? That's cool. Let's just go get catering licenses every single day. Bring them here. So that way we can sell the, the booze and not have the liquor license. Does catering so, work that way? Apparently it did. Okay. Because it's, it's like a one-day thing, right? <laughs> so they did that, and eventually they got busted for that. And then they started skimming money off the top after after a while because they were making so much money. They were skimming like two, two $2.5 million a piece off the top. Wait, is it their club, though? Well, yeah, to not pay taxes on. Oh, right. Yeah, like, I, around, I forget, around, I'm like, not a small business yeah. owner. I forget that sometimes. No, no <laughs> like, ha- like halfway through the night, they were switching out the receipts on the till yeah. to make it look like... Like, that's when they were shutting down. Mm-hmm. So they're taking all that extra cash and not paying the income tax on it. But then when they go to do their books, whoever did their books, put the skim total in the fucking books. Well, this is just, this is just clearly some miscommunication before yeah. between a lackey Like, this is literally someone being like, here's what we made. <laughs> here's what we paid out. Here's our employees getting paid this. This is what we had to pay for booze tonight. This is what we had to pay for these bills. And this is how much we took off the top that no one's supposed to ask questions about. This is the illegal stuff that isn't actually supposed to be yeah. written down. Yeah. Because so then we get caught. So just a bunch of weird <laughs> illegal shit. And, like, all they cared about was creating this, like, larger-than-life club, which it was. Yeah, I've heard of it. it was, I don't know what it, in any context, stu- like, but I know it's I've before heard of our it. time, so it's yeah. one of those things that doesn't affect us in the slightest. We just know of it. Yeah, like but this documentary was so boring. Yeah, like this this documentary it was so boring. Like I feel like the guy. It was one of the like the guys who created it, or like who started the club. Well, that's... like I think he's the one who kind of pushed it. He's like, well, I went to jail for ten years. I came out. I uh, I had a little bit of cash left, but I still needed something. So let's just make a documentary about what I did to try to bring back some more money. Yeah, he should have gone Wolf of Wall Street and made it like a fictional biopic. <laughs> yeah, that would have been. Although, if I'm being honest, I don't think I'd want to watch a movie based off this. It would probably be even worse. Well, so then that's when you add in, you'd add in more interesting. That's why it's fictional, like a, that's or true. fantastical biopic. Because have Eric somebody... Andre just play play the DJ or something, just to yeah, exactly spice like it that. up a little bit. There ends just up being play a murder the Cupid in the shuffle club, nonstop. You know? 
It ended up being a love story, actually. I'm, so knowing Hollywood, they're it just focused yeah. on the love story, which is one of well, one of the of uh, one of the owners. I can't remember his name. I don't think it was Ian. I think it was the other guy. Um, one of the two, anyways. He was closeted most of his life, mm. and no one really questioned his sexuality. He was never really around anybody while they were clubbing. He just liked being high, and then he ended up actually dying of AIDS, and uh, something else. But I'm pretty sure it was the AIDS that got him, like septic shock due to the AIDS. Oh, okay. So like, I'm sure they could have like that as a twist if they were going to make this movie. Just be like, you know, him having a secret love affairs or whatever while this thing was going on. But, but they fucking made a documentary awful instead. documentary. <laughs> awful documentary. Um, I watched Deadpool two with Kendall. Oh, had she yesterday? Not seen it before, she had not seen it before. It was one of our options when we went on our first date. It was either watch Show Dogs and Solo or some other shitty movie and Deadpool. And she tells me yesterday that she wanted to watch Deadpool instead. But I had said that Solo was good, so we went to see that. And I was like, God damn it. <laughs> like, I said I saw both of them. I put the ball in your court. It was our first date. Like, it was your choice. So now it's my fault. <laughs> But uh, she enjoyed it. She laughed. It was a little crude. Well, that's dead. A little, a little crude, <laughs> as I spread my hands out quite far. But she enjoyed it. It was, you know, it was good. This is actually the second time I watched it. Really? It's I, un- I unwrapped time. the DVD for the first time <laughs> that's yesterday. That's hilarious. That's funny. It's funny how those that'll happen. Like I still haven't watched Solo since it came out. Like since theaters. Okay. I'm like, oh shit, yeah. But I'm also like, well. I think I saw it twice in theaters, so... <laughs> yeah, you know it, right? Yeah. It's there. You have it if you want to watch exactly. it, but you don't have to. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I got three more things on my list, and then I will be completed. I watched Burt Kreischer's The Machine. Yep. That just I, got added, right? I almost did that yeah. instead of watching the other thing I watched, and uh, I can't decide if I regret it or not. It's funny. It's not the best. Honestly, I think Secret Time, I think Secret Time is better. Okay. Like this one, he's just. I think this is his first like special. Yeah, and you can see so. he's not. He's not nervous. He's just his energy is just a little too much. Like he's kind of running through things, and he swears so much, which is a lot coming from me. Yeah, but I considering fuck is my isn't even my middle name. Like it's actually <laughs> technically my first name. I just go by Andrew. Mm-hmm. Like he swears a lot. Yeah, I think he's kind of grown a little bit in the last few years in, like, learning about yeah. what his audience likes about him. I think yeah. at that point he was like, oh, yeah, they're, like, swearing and me being that crazy party guy. And I think he's learning a little bit more of that. We just like that he's And now funny. they're like, yeah, we just like the stories. <laughs> yeah, we we, like you seem like a, an stories. everyday guy who's just hanging out with people. Yeah, exactly. So I was so going to check things out left. that, but I didn't yeah, get to it before. It's funny. It's good if you're driving somewhere. Like, oh. that's where I listen to it. Nice. Is when I was driving driving back from Kendall's. Yeah. So two other things I watched. I watched a Walk to Remember as well yesterday, on date night. Seen it like forty two times. Cried probably seventy six times. I'm blanking on which one's a Walk to Remember. This is the Mandy Moore yep. movie where she's got leukemia. But this, is, this isn't the one that you're, like, really... You really like. I think it's... Oh, fuck yeah. I love this okay, movie. Okay, this, this is, is like, the one you really like. This is, like, my like. favorite okay. movie. Okay, I couldn't remember. I was thinking it was maybe Stand By Me, and I was like, is it Stand By Me or this? <laughs> that he's got, like, a heart on for. <laughs> Stand By Me, the Stephen King one? I'm not sure. I think or it's the one it, with... Or is it... Yeah. Yeah, because it's Lean On Me. That's the Morgan Freeman one with the with the uh, inner city high school where the kids sing the song in the bathroom. I like that movie. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, A Walk to Remember is the beautiful story of this douchebag high school dickhead popular kid who ends up succumbing to the infatuations of one Mandy Moore, a.k.a. Jamie Sullivan. And she's got and cancer, right? Or something like like at, that? Yeah, at the beginning of the movie, she's like, okay, I'll run lines with you, but don't fall in love with me. And he's like, pfft. No problem. And immediately you're like, oh, these motherfuckers are going to fall in love. Yeah. It's like, these wait, motherfuckers are going to fall that. in love. He says that to somebody. Like, Don't fall in love with me. It's like, wait, what are you? They were so, they're in high school, right? That sounds they like go a on a couple dates. <laughs> and there's a, every time I watch it, there's like more and more foreshadowing that happens in it. But they go on a couple dates and then they're dancing and he's just like, I love you. And she's like, Ugh! 
<laughs> doesn't know how to say it back. And he's like, you kind of need to say something. And she's like, I told you not to fall in love with me. And you kind of know something's up, but you don't totally know. And then he drops her off at home. And, like, the dad's like, mm, Jamie, what are you doing? And she's like, I love him, dad. And you're like, fuck, yes, you do. You changed him. He's a better guy, Mandy. You're the best. I'm kind of tearing up talking about this. Whew. Anyways, so, and then the dad's like, well, you need to you need to stop acting like a child before things go too far. And you're like, too far? What? What's going on? Like, you may be a minister, but they're in love. And then she hits him with it. Like, the next date they go on, they're talking about how, you know, he's, he's going to apply to college. And she's like, mm, I'm not going. He's like, uh, oh, you're taking a year off to do the Peace Corps thing? She's like, no, I'm dying. I have leukemia. And he's like, uh, you're, you're fucking joking, right? And she's like... I don't need a reason to be mad at God. Like, I just found you. And you're like, holy shit. Wait, what? You can't even deal. And then she... What did God she get kinda, into this? That's it. She kind of, like, she kind of leaves leaves him, kind of. Yeah. And he's he, he goes over and he, like, drops flowers off at the door. And she won't answer the door because she's like, I don't, I don't need to see you. I don't want you to be mad. And then the dad comes home. He's like, hey, just, just tell her I'm not going anywhere. And you're like, Landon, you fucking, you changed, man. You, you're for the better now. And then you, and then I cry again, and just ugh, whew, beautiful story. Not a big fan of Nicholas Sparks, but this this movie, man. Whew, yeah, I thought so. <laughs> it makes me cry for all the good reasons, but you know what makes me cry for all the bad reasons? Oh, it's, oh here it comes, Scott. It? It's a bad time. Docu- One this hour later. This documentary that Craig hit me with. Right as I was finishing one of the worst documentaries I've ever watched, Studio Fifty Four. It's, it's called Behind the Curve. Behind the. Oh, the, the flat the earth flat one. Earthers. I yeah, saw man. this on YouTube today. Not YouTube, Netflix today. And I was like, wait, who? What? No. Yeah, man. I can't. Yeah, man. I can't Watch do it. it. No, I can't. Do it. Watch no, 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 it. No, no, I no, so, no. It's no, so no. funny. It hurts. <laughs> Like it, that, this is so now you understand why flat earther is like <laughs> now it, you... it opens up with a guy like just like oh yeah I used to deny it too but then you start thinking about it you just start trying to find information to debunk it and just it doesn't make sense oh You're my like, god what stupid motherfuckers yeah I this is one of those things like I get very like. You know, a little PC about certain topics that we like to talk about. But flat earthers, fuck you idiots. You're idiots. You're dumb. You don't know shit about the world. And you all just need to take your heads out of your asses and learn a little bit about actual science. Oh, scientists are lying to you. You don't know fuck about scientists if you think scientists can lie to you. Okay? I'm not even, I'm not even that far into it. And the only thing I have in common with flat earthers is I'm not crazy about Neil deGrasse Tyson. Like <laughs> <laughs> The one guy just straight up goes after him, though. That's fair. I can even... I can even accept that, not liking Neil deGrasse Tyson. I don't always agree with him on certain things. I just don't like his attitude. Says. That's fair. I agree. That's, That's one of the things I agree with. I'm like, wait, you such a superiority complex know, just because you terrible. think you know a little bit no, about stuff that, that you're, you're theorizing about? <laughs> doesn't help the situation. But oh, like, God, it's, it's, it's just like the first guy's example is like, look, see those buildings over there? That's Seattle. We shouldn't be able to see that. No supporting evidence. I don't know this how far the way that is. <laughs> they make up shit like the law like, do you know of perspective. How big the fucking Earth is. <laughs> yeah. Do you know how big Seattle is? People do you know that it takes a day, a day, to get to India? Like <laughs> these people are just like you're a fucking ant on a hill. Pretending you're on top of fucking Everest, you small little shit. It's like, oh, I can't see the Earth curve because you're too small. The, the Earth is so big, you can't so literally comprehend it. Big. The like, best you can't. guy was like, there's just, I'm not even that far into it. It's like a half hour. I'm a half I hour. The guy with hour. the hammer and the ping pong balls. I'm a Look half hour. Furious I'm getting just at the topic of a movie being based it, off flat Earthers. It, it hurts my head to watch, but I'm gonna have to finish it. I yeah, so just, I need to see how stupid it gets. It's There's like so. so so the the parts and every single person's like a little character in in this thing and it's pretty it's pretty entertaining. Like the first dude seems to live with his mom. Oh. I can't really tell otherwise. <laughs> I'm supposed to trust um, his opinion? And everybody acts like with his mother. And I'm supposed to trust his opinion. <laughs> acts like they're part of this exclusive little club and it's like everybody else is stupid, yeah, which fucking is morons. really funny. <laughs> but um oh well, well the second guy he comes out and he's he's talking about how like things are created by these by the government and the education system yep. and how they want you to believe things and give you vaccinations yeah. <laughs> he starts hitting you with all of the different conspiracies oh, like, all in one no. go and i'm like 
you're one of the guys. Yep. You're you're the you're the radicalized ISIS guy. But you're the one who's gonna get sucked into this shit. But they're yep. doing it using the technology that they say doesn't like that science yeah. fucking yeah. is lying to you about. But yeah, it's like you wait, know, you're who, using the you internet. Know who invented and the internet? The government <laughs> and scientists. <laughs> Everything, everything your camera. is scientist. Yep. <laughs> the, the camera yeah. you're filming on, the microphone yeah. you're recording oh, on, the light bulb that is shining above your head so we can see your stupid fucking face. Man, like... He literally says, you know, dinosaur, dinosaurs don't exist, right? And you're like, what? <laughs> and he doesn't give you any fucking supporting evidence. He just, He's just like, yeah, they're created. And they're like, oh yeah, it fits in with the six billion years. Oh, that doesn't work? Uh, 14 billion years. And you're like, what? Like, yeah. Where are you getting your numbers from, for starters? It was. It's it's just, there's there's the there's God. that guy and he's bouncing. Well, half like, the time he's doing his interview, he's like bouncing, bouncing a, a ping pong ball, ball, ball on a hammer. On a hammerhead. <laughs> it's brain training. So he and, yeah, like, and he's he, trying to be like, sound he, smart. He's like, oh yeah, this he does uh, that, this shit, and, and I don't uh, know any flat earthers that live with their parents. Okay, what about you, bro? Like, <laughs> what? Yeah, but, and, but I do, because uh, I'm the, the stupidest one with he, the, my he's, head. So he's far saying my his head. Uh, his brain coach told him to look into this flat Earth thing because he's so <laughs> smart. But my oh, like the the part that a made coach. the yeah I know the part that <laughs> that's made a me, job. Uh, the part that made me a little bit crazy and Andrew made the point. I don't know if I necessarily agree with them, but it was the astrophysicist with the pink hair. I I I 100% thought she was serious. She's just really bad at talking to a camera. No, no, cuz she was talking to a couple other guys and I think she was just like kind of egging egging the topic on. Okay. Cuz when I was watching I took it as she's like what the fuck. She's the one who cuz she starts saying like these people you're working with these people. These people are around you and that's oh, kind of what that, sold me on the fact. That part see that that to me I wasn't really paying all that much attention to it cuz I was trying to eat food as quickly as possible. To me Fair that enough. seemed like she was like like We're she was everywhere. in on it too. I didn't see she was an astrophysicist. Okay. So then she sits down at her computer and she pulls up the flight tracker thing and she's like, "Let's let's just just to take a look here." And there's an airplane like south of India heading south, and she's like, "Let's see where's where's this guy going." Well, I think she was being I think she was yeah. being sarcastic. Now that with it, yeah. now, now now that you frame it with that perspective, but like watching it at first, I was like, "This is the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen." Yeah. Like oh god. Because she she goes up to the one guy and she's like, yeah yeah. Did you hear the part about I forget what he says, but did you hear the part about this? And the guy's like, Jesus fucking Christ! <laughs> and then they have a commander from NASA or like a, like he's like, yeah. The the first time I saw it, like I was up in space or something like that. And he's like, I can't believe I have to fucking say this. <laughs> like he's just, I can't believe I'm I've been there. I can't believe I have to try to convince people it exists. I've seen this shit. Yeah. Oh. It's like it's like touching fire and trying to be like, nah, this isn't hot. These blisters, they're from other things. Fire isn't hot. No, it's really it's it's more like somebody. Fire else isn't touching. hot. Wet isn't water isn't wet and ice isn't cold. Get the fuck out of here. It's, the earth is round. It's Space more isn't like real. somebody else touching fire and being like, that's hot, and you being like, it doesn't look hot. <laughs> nah, <laughs> I can't see that it's hot. That's that such a great analogy because it's it's the same kind of stupidity. It's like, oh, fuck. Can you imagine going through life with that level? And if any of our listeners are flat earthers and you're pissed, off. fine, unfollow. Yeah, I don't want Jesus. you. I literally want you to leave my life forever. If I'm related to you, please disown <laughs> leave me. Leave my life forever. I don't want you in it because you people like. I learned like I didn't need the rest of the world to tell me that the flat was the earth wasn't flat because i look at the moon and i'm like huh why why isn't it always a full moon and then you learn that it's the shadow of the fucking earth you can see yep. the roundness of the earth in the moon at night motherfuckers look in the sky you stupid shits well nah, well it's all it's it's just it's the truman show just in real yeah. life the truman well, show is a documentary is literally a thing that was alluded to in this documentary well, of course, film. In the first 20 minutes. Stupid well, this, who this believe anything they read. <laughs> well, what's this guy's name? Like Sean Sargent or something like that? It's uh, Mark Mark Sargent. Mark Sargent. That's what it is. This guy, he's so fucking full of himself, too. Are you Mark he's Sargent? Like, I, was, I was totally against it, and then I started trying to find the information, and then I, then I, it, I was persuaded. So I started a podcast, and I have t-shirts t that say, I'm Mark Sargent, and then I have my, my club. Sh and you're like, get the fuck out of here, man. 
And he's like, no, like, the, 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 I wore a Canada hat. Fuck! Damn it! He's. I thought they were all in America. I thought that's. Yeah. Uh, I did. Uh, was They're honest. here, man. They're they here crossed too. the border. Motherfuckers. We need a wall. <laughs> you need to, uh... <laughs> We need a tower tall enough so that these motherfuckers can jump so off. We can of. snipe these. Mo- yeah. <laughs> so these people can see see the curvature. See the curve and then kill themselves for being so fucking dumb. Stupid. Scott, you need to watch this. I can't. I well, really. There's a point where I he's really bragging can't. about how how like. It's not people yeah. oh. who like hate each other. Everyone's creative and like we make things. And he's got a clock table yeah. in like his you in his put office. Put the flat or earth on anything. Yeah, yeah, you can. <laughs> yeah, you could put a picture of anything round on anything. You know why maps exist? Because they fucking cut cut the globe and they go like this and it works. The oh shit. <laughs> my favorite thing that he says is. Um, when he's talking about how he was uh, starting to figure stuff out, and then he starts to do like the podcast and stuff, he's like, "I was connecting dots that other people had never thought of connecting before." It's like, yeah, because it's not science. Because you're <laughs> yeah, a fucking idiot. Because you're coming up with this shit on the fly. You're making fucking it delusional. Up. Should we start that with this podcast? Should we just start saying stuff yeah. and then just hope it hope it tracks. Hope it, it just catches on. Make shit up. No. You know, man. I have thought about like starting a whole flat earthing thing just so you could just like you know you, you build up a following and then you you're and like you hey switch the title fuck you <laughs> <laughs> this is not really dumb shits so y'all fell for it because you're fucking morons but i know people have tried that and those people just those flat earthers they just go with, with things like oh he go, the man got to him the man the man <laughs> got to him the government shut him down even though he's still on the internet and the government Ugh. can't do that kind of thing but the government shut him down <laughs> Fuck, I hate these we've people We've got so anti-vaxxers, much. we've got so flat much. earthers, and we've got people who still think Marvel is perfection. All I know about, fla- all I know about flat far. earthers, We're though, not throwing the Marvel in there, okay? <laughs> I'm not going to throw them in with these motherfuckers who believe in flat earth. Because, like, I literally lose, I have zero okay, I'm, respect I'm take for that back. as human beings. I'm going to take that back. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to change it. I'm going to say we got people who think the Dark Knight trilogy is the real Batman. No. Okay. My last thing I'm going to say about Mark Sargent is he hits you with a quote. Oh, and it's, when was the last time someone made a happy folk song about 9-11? Because he's playing flat earth music. And he's like singing along with his cat. Yeah, it was. Uh... And then he hits you with, when was the last time someone made a happy folk song about 9-11? They didn't, because it's a tragic fucking thing. <laughs> How are you trying to you correlate that? I mean, with this, people write the tragedy songs about is that tragedies these people... all the time. Just <sighs> never happy folk songs. Yeah, not in a no. cheerful manner that you would sing no. while drunk oh, at a bar. <laughs> yeah, guys, fucked. Oh god, no! I like I can't watch this, guys, because even when I see like little articles online, I like this is this is the one thing that triggers me in all of life because I'm like, no, you idiots! I was five when i figured this out okay just because you think you're special doesn't mean you are just because your mama told you you're special your whole life doesn't mean you are you dumb shit fuck the I hate worst part is this, so this is where it proves that natural selection should still oh, exist don't even yeah, get me started on that deny one it. <laughs> you don't want to get me started on that one then we'll get into certain the things. only positive thing that has come from this is i saw a cat that some crazy vegan bitch who just came up in the documentary for me, I haven't oh. finished yet. Some crazy vegan bitch. She has a cat that I'm pro- I'm pretty sure is probably like a vegan cat, which isn't so great either. I no, got issues with that. That's actually like biologically not something you can do. Your cat will die no. within yeah. four years, yeah. guaranteed. There's yeah. no like you they, can't they, argue with they that. They require meat protein. Yes, they do. They all can't hi- all it. higher ma- brains do. Yes, they However. Do. <laughs> This cat looks just like Iris, so I was like, oh, there's my kitty. <laughs> that is the only real positive thing that's come from you this. You saw a cat. <laughs> yeah, I saw and a cat that looked just them. like my cat. Fuck this flat earth shit. <laughs> I love that cat. She sucks, but I love her so much. But I hate flat So this is what you guys were talking about before I joined on, whether yeah. they should be convicted or committed. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And now you know, like, it's valid. These yeah, are valid no, I points. agree, because it's just, uh this is like this is the one thing that I like I cannot tolerate. There's certain things I can be like, okay, whatever, you know. I'm not even gonna list them in this thing because that's just a, it's a whole list of trouble. But 
you know, it's the one thing that I'm like, no, you don't get to like deny all of fucking science. You don't get to pretend that science isn't real just because you decided that you think you know something and you have no like no common sense whatsoever. Just uh, <laughs> frustrates me so much. <laughs> yep. But that is all I've watched. And next week, I look forward to picking it up after Craig and I have both finished <laughs> this documentary, which I'm fairly confident will be oh, yeah. tonight yeah. for myself anyways. Yeah. There's a strong possibility. I have to drive a Nissan Sentra that may or may not fall apart while I'm driving it into work tomorrow. But <laughs> that's okay. Cold one? I'll do it completely, completely asleep. Well, if you die... I'll at least awake. you'll die. No, yeah. At least you'll die. Yeah, you'll be woke. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if you die, you'll be woke. That is. Those are the words of wisdom we're going to leave you with this week, guys. Yeah. Thanks for listening. Thanks Bye. for listening. Bye. <laughs>